In an afternoon uh, in April of 1991, I got a telephone call from a friend who told me that uh, Lee Wolf had died of a heart attack while flying his uh, airplane, and he crashed it uh, right outside of, uh, of Hancock. And the world uh, had lost a giant. Lee was uh, one of the most innovative uh, anglers in the history of fly fishing. And I had seen some of the things that he has invented are just absolutely uh, marvelous. And his love for flying and salmon fishing. When he was younger, he had uh, uh, he was traveling around and, uh, as a bush pilot and uh, going to different uh, fishing camps. And all this is very much in evidence in uh, many of the films and the books he has written. Uh, I had expressed uh, a, a great interest in filming this landing sometime when he landed his plane uh, on the lawn down there. And then later on, sitting down and having a fly tying session with Lee, where he would tie a couple of flies in his fingers without a vice, just as an historical record. Lee, we thank you for all you have done for us, and uh, we, we, we know that uh, everything you have done will be looked at as a, as a legacy, and it would be uh, admired and cherished uh, for, for years to come. Uh, we will always have you with us in spirit. This was a good preload to a little fly tying session we're going to have <laughs> later on, huh? Yeah, it's well, a nice way to get around. That field must look like a like a penny when you're up there. Yeah, it's a postage stamp, but it's a good airplane. Gets into lots of little places. Well, I would, I'm very very uh, lucky to be here and do this. Uh, well, last time last time you came in, I wasn't here, so. This time I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that I got it. We better go inside. It's pretty cold. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank Fall's you. Fall's coming on. Yeah. Right. Do that. <laughs> Thank okay. you. What are you can What are you gonna do for us, please? Well, I'll tie a, a white wolf on a number ten hook, and then I'll tie a a twenty-eight midge. Okay. Sounds that sounds good. Um. I think you're, you're the only person I think who ties uh, in his fingers. Well, I don't know about that, but I don't know anybody else who ties 28. Not, tw not 28, they're just a little too, <laughs> little too small. It's kind of, yeah, I, I started a long time ago and worked into it gradually. You can get the thread started around the shank, that's always a bit of a problem. I would say it would be quite a problem tying the whole thing. <laughs> Well, it looks like it's going along well so far. Well, 
It's interesting. You have to make these half inches the right way. But, you, but what, what do you mean by the right way? Well, so that they uh, come through in, in the direction they're going. You don't get it like a timber hitch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What is that? Uh, is that cement you're using there? Yeah, well, it's, it's really, it's a, a, a lacquer that will just keep it from turning on the hook. I'll take a few of these fibers for tail. This gray thread is harder to see than the black. Yeah. And I guess it's finer than 7X. Is that the pre-waxed uh, thread you use? I don't think so, but maybe. That, if it was? It, it's uni-thread. Yeah, it's pre-waxed. Yeah. That makes it a little stiffer than just a silk thread. Yeah, well, it, it does that and it, it keeps it from... Uh, coming apart the fibers, you know, pulling out. Okay, we got a fly in the body and we need a hackle. This is really the ultimate in fly tying artistry, you know? Well, I think it takes more hand control than anything else in fly tying. A lot of discipline, too. Yes. <laughs> When do you think the next time will be where you get a chance to see if you can better your your record, salmon record on the I don't know. It's not much point to, well, to do it in New Brunswick because I have to put the fish back. What I really want is one to mount for the school. Yeah. So when somebody says, well, what can you catch on a hook like that? I can point and say, fish like that. <laughs>
those are the, the half pitches that you finish with. That's right. Four half pitches. See this thing. I, I think I miss my bright light. Yeah. At the, I would think that you need a lot of light to, to be able to see this. Yeah, it's better that it's very hard to see this very fine stuff. On a on a fly like that. Uh, a ten or something, or any of the wet flies. I can do a uh, a whip finish. Sure. You know, it's, you don't need a machine to do that. No. As you know. I I do all my whip finish in my in, with my fingers. It's much simpler and much easier to do. For me, uh, it is. Yeah. But that was the way I learned it when I first started. This one is all right. Good. Let me get that out of there. Where is it? It's right there. Good. Now, oh, you can God. take a look at it. That is just incredible. It's uh, the hard part, really, is turning it around when you're holding it by the eye to be able to turn around by the hold it by the tail the back of the hook in order to get those loops over without having it come undone keeping tension on it yeah. well Lee I know that uh, people who are going to watch this movie are going to uh, maybe say to themselves hey i got to go home and try that well I, I hope they do and there's no reason why somebody else can't do it it takes, you know, it takes, uh, it takes practice. Little, uh, practice, but if they start with bigger flies and and keep working on it, they, you develop it. There are a lot of people with good hands. I'm sure you could do it if you really wanted to, but it would take a little time. Well, so. it would take a while, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate you taking <laughs> the time to do this. No, it's, it's fun, and it's for a very good cause. <laughs> <laughs>